Our Gen Con coverage is brought to you by Hit Point Press. From animated spell and tarot cards to their breathtaking Humblewood campaign setting and adventure, Hit Point Press is your one-stop shop for amazing 5e content. Check out our links below for all the gaming goodness. We are here back at the Paizo booth with our favorite star, Eric Mona. Eric, how is your convention going so far? It is going incredibly. Like, this is, it, Gen Con is like fully, fully back. Yesterday was insane. We had lines circling the booth, ringing sales all day. People are super stoked, not just here at this Paizo booth, but the whole exhibit hall. It's just exciting to be at Gen Con. It was the longest line at a Paizo booth I've ever seen, personally. Was it Starfinder Playtest? What's everybody excited about? It's it's a couple of things. We've got the big Starfinder Playtest book here and an adventure to go with it. And we have Player Court 2, yeah. which is the fourth book in the whole remaster process. So that's got a bunch more classes and kind of finalizes the core four, if you will. So a lot of excitement about those three products, lots of people getting into Pathfinder over the last year, kind of coming here and like spinning around like a kid in a candy store because we got basically everything here. And uh, so it was just uh, wall to wall. We got Wayne Reynolds in the booth, yes. our, our artist. So it's just been really, really good. Really, really good. You got a whole ballroom upstairs with people playing the playtest yes. and other Pathfinder adventures. Yes, and Starfinder demos and playtest adventures. And the Sagamore Ballroom is like our home away from home at Gen Con. We're so excited to be in there. We've expanded back into another bay. There's only one more bay for us to conquer, reconquer the entire territory after COVID kind of set us back a little bit. But we're super stoked about that. Uh, there's games in there all con long. There's like a thousand people playing Pathfinder and Starfinder at any one time, which is quite a sight to see. Uh, These giant 30-foot banners, like mm -hmm. it's 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 hard not to feel a little pride going into a room like that. I was gonna say, sure. just coming from like way back in the day and looking at how much it's developed, like how does it feel to see so many people so excited for every new product? You know, it's amazing. I was just telling a colleague earlier today that like when we first released the very first edition Pathfinder core rulebook in uh, Gen Con 2009. One of the first years or early years it was in Indy. We were on the other side of the exhibit hall. And all I remember from that is just the crush of people and people being so excited. And, and, and then recently I saw a video of it that someone had taken, like a fan or something had taken. And like it was busy, but like you, you, they, they caught the door in the back of the frame and you'd like one person come in, two people come in one person comes in now they open the doors right behind us here and it's like a swarm of people mm -hmm. so gen con itself has grown so much since 2009 and certainly paizo's grown as well and so it's just gratifying to see in some ways that like same enthusiasm and energy keeps carrying through year after year mm -hmm. and this year with big releases of, of player core 2 and the starfinder uh playtest book People are just even more excited than 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 last year, than the year before. It's just great to see. You gotta keep topping yourself. I know that's the that's like that's what I that's the fear, right? Because you kind of think and you're like, well, you know, just kind of you don't generate this kind of excitement with like best year five. You know what I mean? There's got to be something. We got to bring the heat every year at Gen Con, and this time we're firing with two barrels, so it's really exciting. And next year, you've already talked about the official Starfinder next Second year, Edition. We're gonna have the official launch of Starfinder Second Edition. We're gonna have uh, Pathfinder Battle Cry, which is a big battle war book that we're doing. Um, it's really pretty exciting. Well, let's talk about year. yeah. Let's talk about the playtest, the yes. Starfinder Second Edition playtest. So, tell us what we have right now. What can people dive into now if they want to try it out? Okay, right now, people watching online can go to paizo.com or, or StarfinderPlaytest.com and download for free the playtest rulebook. We also have printed uh, a limited number of those for people who want a printed book and don't want to spend a hundred dollars going to a print shop and getting a crappy black and white one. So, we've got the Starfinder playtest rulebook here. We have the Starfinder first playtest adventure, which is called A Cosmic Birthday, mm -hmm. which is actually sold out here at the show. You can still get it uh, at local retailers and online at paizo.com, but you can't get it here anymore. Uh, and then we have uh, a uh, playtest flip mat set as well, that, so that you can uh, playtest the encounters in the Cosmic Birthday in style. Uh, so those are the three big playtest releases that we have here. Those work in concert with Pathfinder Player Core and Pathfinder GM Core. That's Pathfinder. That's right. right, because we're bringing the rule sets into alignment. So once we put out that three action economy and the degrees of success with Pathfinder 2nd Edition, people fell in love so much with those new rules, they just really have been asking us almost since day one, when are you going to bring this to Starfinder? When are you going to bring this to Starfinder? And really, 
this week is the day, you know, and so we're eager to get people's feedback as part of the formal playtest process. That'll go on for several more months. Then we'll incorporate that feedback into a new player core and an alien core and a GM core and a whole raft of Starfinder books starting to release here at Gen Con next year. Do you know what you're going to have available next year at Gen Con? Exactly. Yeah, I think the, the plan is to have uh, the Starfinder player core will be out. and That'll be a nice, big, thick rule book. Um, and unlike the playtest book, you won't need Pathfinder, but it's not a setting for Pathfinder. It's a full game. We just didn't want to charge people for the rules that aren't really going to change, you know. Um, so in uh, in uh, next year, you can get it as a full standalone game. Uh, it'll start with the player core. We'll release like GM core and alien core a little bit later in the year. We can't quite jam out three hardcover rule books all at once. Yeah. Uh, but we'll have some adventures, we'll have some other really cool accessories and stuff. It'll be a nice celebration of Starfinder 2nd Edition. Is there a new uh, beginner box plan possibly to help bring people on board? There will be, uh, not right away. We're going to kind of get the folks who are most excited about it kind of churning on the full rule set and then we're going to go in and do uh, a beginner box probably sometime in 2026. Is there any kind of big narrative transition between Starfinder First Edition and Second Edition the way we did with Pathfinder? Well, that's an interesting question, and some of that will be revealed. I will say one of the exciting things is that the adventure, A Cosmic Birthday, uh, the birthday in question is the planet Octurn, uh, which has all kinds of like old one energy cracks open like an egg and a new uh, divine entity emerges into the world. Um, and so things like that will be changing in the Starfinder world. Um, but, you know, there's going to be a lot of familiar elements as well. We're not advancing the timeline any more than sort of a year like we do standard with our Pathfinder releases. Um, so it's going to be the same Starfinder people love, but there's going to be some new approaches, some new focus as well. Excellent. And I have my handy dandy cheat sheet because there's ah. so many things to cover. But yeah. let's talk about Pathfinder and the War of Immortals, uh, an all encompassing event, quite a few products under that. Kind of give us the overview. Yeah, so War of Immortals is uh, kind of second edition's answer to the mythic rules from first edition. And this is to say, like, characters who are imbued with divine destiny. Um, and it's got a couple of new character classes tied into that idea. Um, it has special rules and feats for playing sort of heavily, you know, mythic games that, that kind of pump things up to the next level. And um, and that is, like, was going to be it. That was going to be the big rule book uh, for, the, for the winter. It's coming out in October. And uh, Michael Sayer, who is the head of our rules and lore team, came to me one day and he said, you know, what would be really cool is we should kill a god uh, when we do this. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, let's 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 make this a big thing. Let's kill a god. And it was such a great idea that it kind of just like ignited the whole company. And then it was like, well, what god should we kill? And that, of course, there were a few that if we killed, like we knew we would ourselves be killed. You know, like we can't kill Caden, Kaelian, or Desna or something like that. Um, but so we started looking through, and then we said, like, what would be the most interesting? What would create the most interesting stories? And that's kind of when we zoomed in on Gorum, the god of war. And so the idea of like th this Gorum's killed, which is something that actually happens in the adventure Pray for Death, which came out yesterday here at the show. So uh, you can watch Gorum die on screen. We don't want to just tell players that this is happening. We want them to see it, you know? And so uh, with Gorum's death, his, his armor is torn apart pieces of his gear shoot all over all the worlds where Gorum is met, uh, worshipped and they're known as war shards and they're very powerful artifacts. Uh, red rain falls from the sky and wherever that red rain falls new conflicts emerge. Silver rain falls from the sky and wherever that rain falls uh, people are imbued with uh, mythic power um, and so it's just a huge sort of setting wide event and the War of Immortals book is going to cover the bulk of that uh, we actually have really cool regional gazetteers in there that's like, here's what's happening in the inner sea. Here's what's happening in Tian Sha. Here's what's happening in Garand. And then something I'm very excited about, here's what's happening in Kazmaron, the eastern continent that we really haven't done that much for. I was able to contribute some of that myself by because I'm just like a continuity nerd. So I've been tracking everything we've ever said about that continent since the beginning. So I wrote a section on that. We've got new gods emerging, tumultuous events in the Padishah Empire of Kalesh, kind of reshaking 
shaking up the landscape politically over there in ways that will echo into the uh, inner sea region. And um, and so that's that's going to be War of Immortals. That's the big new source book for, uh, for October. Then in November, we've got a couple of other really exciting releases that are tied into that. We have Lost Omens Divine Mysteries, which updates the gods and magic book, uh, but also expands it to over 300 pages with all kinds of new gods. Basically, if it's a god, and we've mentioned it in Pathfinder going back to 2007, it's represented in that book somewhere. Uh, it'll give uh, some additional rules for like clerics and champions to, to more fully embrace their religions. Um, it will uh, basically update a lot of the material in Gods and Magic as well as, so about half of it is like updating that material, about half of it's brand new material. And the whole thing's gonna be the most definitive source book on the Gods of Galarian that we've ever published. So that's very exciting. We also have in November uh, a, a book called, a, a novel, yes. a hardcover novel by Leanne Merciel, one of our favorite Pathfinder writers, uh, has written a book called God's Reign that tells the story of Mauriciel, the uh, rogue, Kira the cleric, Ezrin the wizard, and Amiri the barbarian, what were they doing during this tumultuous God's Reign event? So uh, we are really excited about that book. It's super, super fun. It's Paizo's first serious foray into fiction in about five years. And you so, plan to make an audiobook of that? Uh, yes, there will be an audiobook and a digital book as well. Um, we are very hopeful that we'll do more books as well, you know, in 2025 and beyond. So that's kind of a, a fresh start there. Um, we have a couple of adventure paths that tie into the War of Immortals as well. We have the um, Curtain Call adventure path, which is a hilarious idea. It's like a famous playwright has heard of your adventures through levels 1 to 10 and decides that they want to do a big opera based on your adventures. So of course your creative consultants, I don't know, maybe stars, depending on how brazen you are, you know, and, uh, and you know, spoilers, but like the complicating thing is on opening night, Gorham is killed and in the, in the skies above the, the playhouse there's this scene of murder and and rain starts falling and chunks of his armor start falling and it's just super chaotic so that's like a fun high level let's get a seat at the table see what's going on during the war of immortals and then following that uh we're doing an adventure path called the triumph of the tusk which is a three volume adventure path which is all about orcs so it, one of the cool things about uh the second edition setting was when the whispering tyrant the big lich lord of the north came back after uh, a substantial absence he's like come to me my orcs be my cannon fodder once again and the orcs are like we're really tired of this. We are our own people. We're not doing that. And so it's just kind of cast a new light on orcs, which is frankly a much maligned ancestry, you know, in the hobby re uh, role playing business. So we wanted to like take a fresh look and be like, well, what are Galarian orcs like? How are they not? you know what's their culture like how could you interact with them you could play an orc in the adventure path you could play an ally um but we wanted to kind of center the story around orcs not having them as the other but them as like the main characters of the story and we're really excited about that as well does it encourage that players play orcs in that adventure but yeah you, you don't have to but i i mean you should it's kind of like when we did the pirate adventure path it's like well you don't have to play a pirate right but it's going to be a lot more fun if you do or the dwarven one too. yeah 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 exactly exactly I do like those deep dives some of the yeah. races that maybe haven't gotten a lot of love in a little while. Yeah, and you know, we have also got uh, an adventure path coming soon called Spore War, um, and that involves Tree Razor, the, the highest level monster in the Monster Core, and uh, that is going to have a lot of elf stuff because it's set in the elf land of Kyanan. So we're kind of in this spot now where it's like, we've sort of set the table for second edition, we've sort of brought a lot of like stuff for people who are just coming along for the first time, like, oh, let's do a once around the world kind of thing with Age of Ashes, and now we're like, now it's time to play with some of the toys again. Yeah. So we are gonna, you know, I would say when in a year next year where we are focusing heavily on combat and warfare, uh, you're going to see Andoran and Cheliax maybe heating up a little bit. And this is a conflict that we've been bubbling up since like 2008. So it's going to be really exciting to see where that goes. And, and you know, everybody on the team's really like working together. We're planning further out than we ever have before. And that makes it easier to kind of tie some stuff together and really collaborate in-house at Paizo in a way that I think really 
pays off in the final books themselves. And people who like Aslant have something to look forward to as well, I believe. Oh, yes, the Shades of Blood Adventure Path, which is going to be set on the sunken, partially sunken continent of Aslant. Uh, and that is going to be, it's going to involve... Uh, vampires. It's going to involve an effort to kind of blot out the sun. It's going to involve exploration of a sunken continent. Uh, we are very excited to play with those toys again as well. That is going to be fun too. And now that Starfinder is being brought into line, it opens up some possibilities for some crossovers there. Does that open up a new play box of maybe new races or new um, stories that you want to tell that you might be able to intermingle those a little bit more? Well, I think that absolutely. You know, I mean, one of the cool things about having the core systems being so similar is that it's going to be a lot easier to port stuff from system to system. So if there's an ancestry that you really, really love in Starfinder, you can bring that into Pathfinder. And then if there's a really cool sort of traditional fantasy uh, ancestry that you want to bring into Starfinder, we don't have to like totally represent it and be like, okay, you guys, here's the elves again. It's like you have the elf stuff. We'll give you some additional Starfinder flavored elf stuff, but um, it's just going to be kind of a, hopefully it'll be a fun mix and match for a lot of people. And then, you know, People do have similar requests uh, as the years go by, and one of the things people have been asking us for is like, okay, we really like the Iron Gods adventure path. When can we get some of that technology into Pathfinder um, for that sort of science fantasy or fantasy science, if you will? Um, and you know, I will say that having a robust set of science fiction rules certainly help to make something like that more possible. Yeah, that is one thing we haven't really seen in Pathfinder 2nd Edition yet, at least in my memory. I mean, there's a thousand books over there, and I may not have looked at every single one. haven't world. really done anything with Numeria, you know, the land of the crashed spaceship, and that, that I would say certainly top five, top ten adventure path from 1st Edition that people really loved and want to come back to. So, um, we're, you know, we're assembling the tool chest that allows us to build that house. So that'll be fun. And the other one that's a little bit out of left field to me was Rival Academies. Yeah. Tell me about that one. Rival Academies is a really interesting book for a couple of different reasons. Um, the new remaster rules for the wizard uh, have changed how schools work from the past. And so that leaves a little bit of a gap of like, okay, well, what does that mean for the player? What does that mean for Galarian? And so we wanted to kind of fill that gap as quickly as possible. We've long wanted to do a book about different sort of uh, particularly magic-oriented education groups in the, you know, in the uh, in the setting. Um, we also have wanted to revisit a part of the world called the Sarkoris Scar, which is where the World Wound was in First Edition, where the gateway to the abyss and demons were pouring through, and then they had a big war to stop that, uh, and that was done successfully in the. Uh, uh, Wrath of the Righteous Adventure Path back in the day, and so we are um, we are going to be uh, checking that out as well, and um, try not to be distracted by people about to walk right <laughs> past us. Uh, but yeah, so so uh, we're going to be visiting Sarkoris Scar. So the the Sarkorians uh, were sort of spread away from that land during the infestation of demons. Now they're coming back, and they're inviting all these other uh, educational uh, institutions for sort of like a world. World's Fair style, sort of big conference sort of thing with challenges to go out and explore the ruins, rivalries between the different schools. And one of the things we're really excited about is that there's going to be rules for playing a second edition rune lord yes. in this book. Like so an archetype, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's something we've been really wanting to do for a long time. And uh, this is the book that's going to do it. And this is a Lost Omen setting guide, correct? Lost Omen setting book for spring of 2025. Yeah, it's like February, March, somewhere in there. Now, sometimes these setting guides have adventures that are tied into them, more or less. Anything planned here that maybe I haven't heard about? Or? No, but the book itself has lots of little adventure seeds and, and little mini adventure things built right in. Excellent. Uh, why don't we tell this person been looking over our shoulder this entire time uh, right here? Oh. Kind of hard to miss. Uh, tell us about Prisma. Well, Prisma is a skittermander and is sort of becoming the unofficial mascot of Starfinder 2nd Edition. Mm -hmm. uh, we just fell in love with the image that we got from our artists and we're like, you know, it'd be so fun to create a statue of that. So we've wanted to do, you know, we've done some some uh, stuff with whiz kids did did the the life-size goblins and kobolds and we love those but we kind of wanted something with a very specific flair and she's got kind of an 80s vibe to her she's got the cassette player and the headphones and the she's just pretty cool and and you know starfinder I'd, I'd say almost even more than pathfinder 
doesn't really take itself too seriously, and so we wanted to kind of lean in a little bit. And Skitter Manners have been one of the most popular original ancestries for that game since the very beginning, and so we thought, let's make one for real. And it's been extremely popular with people doing selfies and stuff here at the show, and you know, we're nerds at heart, and we've always just like, would be so cool to have a statue of something in our booth, and here we are. Is Prisma perhaps uh, a tangential member of Strawberry Machine Cake? I uh, certainly a fan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if not a member, I think you know what, it, what what's playing in these headphones. Certainly, one would hope that the popular Starfinder band Strawberry Machine Cake is high on her playlist. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Eric, anything else you want to share with us about your experience at the con or things that you're looking forward to? I mean, I am just like so excited to be back here. Uh, so excited to have really exciting products like the Player Core 2 and the Starfinder uh, playtest book. Um, I Honestly, it's been so slammed, I've hardly been out of this booth. So it's just really cool. It's been great to see people. Um, I just, Gen Con, this is my 28th one in a row. Um, and so like, it's like a reunion of old friends. It's a great opportunity to meet new friends. Uh, I just, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Uh, and I, I never have, and I never will. It's nerd summer camp. That's we can't right. miss it. That's right. <laughs> exactly right. So yeah. And that's it. You know, I just say, you know, for anyone watching, if you're interested in the Starfinder playtest, go to starfinderplaytest.com, download a free copy of the Starfinder playtest rule book. Maybe check out some of the new scenarios we've dropped for, uh, through Starfinder society to play test. We'll two our scenarios uh, debuting here at the show check out a cosmic birthday um, it, it we really want your feedback so please do uh, give us a hand and and have great time uh, with the second edition Starfinder rules excellent and uh, also good luck tonight at the any awards you're up for Tian Sha yes Tian Sha is up and there's I think another one we're up for it's very exciting you know Paizo uh, used to sort of dominate the Ennies back in the day and then there was a, a brief period where it sort of turned into a weird cult of personality and they didn't like us anymore but now they seem to like us again and I welcome their their renewed love so hopefully we can win the teams have been working really hard on these projects and I you know uh, I, I hope that they can get the recognition that they deserve for that. The, our employee union just won the Diana Jones Award, which is huge for, for them and, and for the company, and I think that's great. So it would be really nice to kind of keep on rolling the wins, but, you know, just to be nominated is an honor. And uh, and it's I think a lot of the staff's really excited to, to pop over to the ceremony later tonight. Yeah, we'll be there as well, so uh, we'll look for you there. But, Eric, thanks so much. Enjoy your con, and we'll see you next year. It's always great talking to you. Thanks so much, Theo. Stay tuned here at the Gallant Goblin for the latest from Gen Con 2024. For now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.